Hi guys, welcome back to another glorious Napoleon Total War online battle. And today, me and Carl von Clauswitz are going to be playing two players on the Lodi map. And while we do the army composition, we are going to have to pause, guys, because as you can see on the mini map, there's already some shit going down, so to speak. And of course, the rules for this battle were no fixed artillery. No unicorns, uh, max two arts and max four lights, and that was it. So, let's take a look at the army. So, I am playing the glorious French Empire with a unit of six pounder horse artillery, a unit of howitzers, if we can find those. I do not know where you are. Oh, there they are. Or a unit of six inch howitzers. I was playing with four of the standard chasseurs, the standard lights for the French. Two units of the fusilier of the line. Three units of the Swiss foot, if we can find these boys in their glorious red uniforms. Should be in here somewhere. There they are. Perfect. One unit of the glorious young guard. Here they are, boys. Ready to go into battle. And one unit of the biggest G's in the game, the Old Guard. Here they are. Absolutely fantastic troops. And I had as my cavalry five units of the Chasseur à Cheval. A very, very strong unit for its price. Over here, Carl was playing as Russia and going for the hill. Now he had five units of these mounted rifles. Look at these boys. Fantastic. I love the uniform of the officer in this as well. Very, very nice. He had six of the standard Russian musketeers. One of the Moscow musketeers, if we can find those boys. Should be down here then. Yeah, one unit of the Moscow musketeers. Look at that uniform. That is excellent. They've got like a fur on their... It looks like fur on their lapels. I don't know what that is. Interesting. And then one unit of the very elite lifeguard foot. Three of the Russian Jaegers, the standard lights for the Russians. And one unit of the 17th Jaeger Regiment, a slightly better uh, version of the Russian Jaegers. Got cooler hats, basically. That's all you need to know about those boys. And you've got two units of the six pounder horse artillery. But this, basically, in this battle, artillery was not used at all. So, that is something that's very interesting out about this battle. So, my opponent over here on the left-hand side is Prussia. And he has a pretty interesting army. One fusilier. So, one light foot, and that is it. No more light infantry than that. He has four of the musketeers, the standard Prussian musketeers. Three units of the foot guard, so very elite infantry. And one unit of the eight life, life regiment, so an even more elite infantry. I love the colour of their uniforms. White pants, though, when you're campaigning in the 18th and 19th centuries is not a good idea, I've got to say. He does have one unit uh, of Jaegers. He might have more units of Jaegers. They might just be hiding, and I could be wrong about that. Uh, but I'm not sure. So he has three units of militia as well, which is very interesting. Probably brought them because he thought we were going to be fighting over them over the river. But as you can see, Carl is not going to be playing those games at all. Now, in terms of his cavalry, he has a very diverse mix of cavalry. He has two units of the standard hussars, which are over over here. Two units of the standard hussars, ready to go. He has one unit of the Brandenburg Uhlans. Look at these guys. Some good lances there. One unit of the Tawarkzis. Yep, that's how you say it, guys, of course. And one unit of the Life Hussars. So look at these guys with their skulls on their caps. Are we the baddies? If you get that reference, guys, let me know. <laughs> um, and then, of course, across from Carl, we have a British army, which is pretty, pretty elite, not going to lie. A very elite army. So he's got two units of the five-inch howitzers ready to go. He has four units of the standard light foot. Look at these glorious red uniforms. 
Everyone wears wet white pants, I've found, in this game for some reason. Um, and then his infantry is very interesting because it's very, very elite. Look at this. So three units, two units of the King's German Legion foot. Our boys from Hanover. And he's got the 88 foot. The Connaught Rangers, our boys from Connaught. And he has the 42nd foot, the Black Watch. I don't actually know whereabouts in Scotland the Black Watch is from. It'd be interesting if someone knew to put that down in the comments down below. And then he has two units of foot guards. So his infantry is pretty elite. Very, very elite. And his cavalry is even more elite than his infantry. Two units of the heavy lifeguards. Very heavy cavalry. Two, uh, one unit of the Royal Scots Greys. Look at these boys. Absolutely glorious. And one, u another unit of the lifeguards there. So... Let's get this battle underway, and as you can see, Carl has brought his mounted rifles up to try and engage them in cavalry battle. I am moving my troops across the river, and I saw this, so I decided to get my chasseurs up there as quick as I could. Look at this big cavalry battle that's starting already on the hillside while Carl is pushing his troops up as fast as he can. So as you can see, he's got the Ulans and these guys coming around, so it's a good move by Prussia. Because some of these mounted rifles are already running because these units are very, very, very strong. I can't, I can't tell you enough how strong some of these guys are in melee, um, these cavalry units that the British has. But, as you can see, with the shooting of the mounted rifles, this is why the mounted rifles and the chasseur à cheval are just so OP. Uh, because they shoot before they, before they go, which is uh, very, very strong. And they basically ruin probably like 20% of a full unit before they're gone. But as you can see, the British have basically cleaned up this amount of cavalry. But the Prussian player, I'm not sure what he was doing, decided to charge into the squares, which of course, you know, does not work in Napoleon. The squares will absolutely shred you. Um, so he decided to kind of throw the rest of his cavalry away at this point. And same with the British player. So I'm not sure whether they were relatively new players. Um, but as you can see, my chasseurs are coming in, ready, ready to join the battle, boys. Here they come as the mounted rifles. Only nine of these boys remaining run away from the fight. And as you can see, the squares, of course, are going to hold out strong. They cannot beat. Oh, he's got a, I forgot the Prussian player. He's got a unit of these uh, Lutz, uh, Lutzers Freikorps as well, which... Um, it's basically a militia cavalry unit. It's not the best cavalry unit. But, as you can see, although he has thrown much of his cavalry away, what that's allowed is the British player to bring his light foot up. But he, he brings them up without support, which is very weird. Very, very weird. And these two units of mounted rifles are down in the bottom, creating chaos for these boys. As you can see... Trying to get after that Prussian general. And up here, it's pretty much not much left. And my chasseurs are down chilling at the bottom. So over here, I was pushing around to the left hand flank, thinking that this was going to be a more standard Prussia into the city sort of battle. But no, Prussia is pushing up in the center. So I abandoned that plan and got my troops right across the river as fast as I could. Just a standard couple of Swiss foot and a fusilier of the line and two chasseurs and as you can see we've also brought up the rest of the infantry over here ready to go but up on the hill just light foot that's uh, that's there at the minute so Carl should do a very decent job of getting rid of those boys look at this here they go in melee the Russian musketeers the Russians if no if you don't know are very good in melee as a standard troop better in melee than most other standard troops. And these six inch howitzers come in. These chasseurs come in. But they're very tired already. It's mad that they get so tired. So quickly. But here comes the Prussian Empire. Ready to fight the Russians. On the hill. But as you can see. They didn't really. They kind of abandoned the hill at this point. Which was kind of strange. Especially after that cavalry push. That cavalry push was probably... You know, it was a decent delaying tactic if you wanted to come up and take the hill. 
But they no longer wanted to come up and take the hill anymore. So that was a bit of an issue for them. So we didn't even have to fight hard for this hill, really. As you can see, he's bringing his lifeguards in again. Fantastic. Yes, very good. And this, the British player brought his troops back down and then decided to bring his troops back up. So obviously a bit of indecision there. Wasn't quite sure what he wanted to do. But here we go. Here come the chasseurs firing into those Prussian ranks. Let's go, boys. And they are very elite troops, so we've got to be wary of that with the eight, with the foot guards here. But, of course, we're going to be able to do some serious damage to those boys before they've even had chance uh, to flank or anything. Over here, the Prussian player decides that it's time for a big melee crush into my chasseurs. This wasn't really too much of a problem. Um... Because we had our troops here lined up, ready to fire at them. I actually didn't notice this for a little bit. Uh, so he is going to be able to shred those chasseurs. But that isn't really a problem. And as you can see, pushing the troops up as fast as we can. And he's going to bring his cavalry in, which is a decent move by him. To try and get rid of my chasseurs and force me into square, which he does, effectively. And as you can see, the Swiss foot are coming. But here come the chasseurs à cheval. Absolute beastly unit. Ready to destroy the rest of this Prussian cavalry. And we forced him into square in reverse, which is fantastic. And as you can see up here on the hill, the Russian player, Karl, is pushing down the hill already. So they really should have contested this hill. Because otherwise, we wouldn't have been able to flank so much as we did. And as you can see... The 8th Life Regiment, the Musketeers, are still fighting my Chasseurs. I do not know how this Chasseur has lasted so long, but it has done an excellent job. And here come the Cavalry out after forcing them into square. We are going to advance once again. This Swiss Foot taking a huge amount of damage here. Look at this. Look at this battle, boys. Absolutely stunning. I love Napoleon Online battles. You end up with some absolutely stunning battles. And as you can see... The Russian player, Karl, is fighting the British player down here very nicely. And I sent this Chasseur à Cheval all the way round on the map, all the way round to the back, just to try and take out his general. And as you can see, we are winning this battle. And there the general goes, killed in behind his own troops. So that was something that was decent. I enjoyed doing that, I'm not going to lie. Um, and that is going to reduce the morale of that British player quite considerably. But look at the look at the battle that's raging on the hillside, boys. Absolutely raging. Woo! The sun. Very beautiful. Get that sun in there. Thumbnail and a half there, boys, isn't it? Let's get that. Fantastic. Fire away, boys! Fire away! As the gunpowder smoke rises in the air. And as you can see, we've practically crushed this flank already. And all that's left is the British troops. So it was a bit of a blitz battle. And honestly, I didn't really have that much to do. And as you can see, the Prussian troops over here have been shredded. Because we got our troops into a good firing position. And started firing into them. Rather than engaging them in melee. There was just this 8th Life Regiment fighting my Fusiliers of the line. And that's all that was left. And here come the Chasseurs. That's Raval. Ready. To jump into these foot guards. And they rout. Which is perfect for us. And of course this chasseur has done very very well. Very well. Doing some really decent damage. And some effective uh, damage behind the troops. As you can see though these musketeers are slowly losing. Because he's fighting some very elite troops. Foot guards. Where are the 42nd black watch? Here they are. Look at these boys. Come on the boys. Let's go. Ready to fight. And at this point, my flank was crushed, basically. And I didn't really have that much to do. So I brought the chasseurs in to finish off that 8th life regiment. And if you noticed, like, we didn't even really use our artillery at all. So, and this how it says not even unlimbered. Because we didn't need to. Because um, Carl was just so aggressive against these boys. Absolutely shredding them. And it was fantastic moves by him. But the British player 
really should have contested this hill, especially after that cavalry push. If you're going to waste all your cavalry trying to push another uh, enemy off the hill, take the hill. Take the hill. That is exactly what you should have done. And as you can see, Carl is charging down the hill, boys. Look at this. Glorious charge of the Russian musketeers down the hill. Come on, boys. Fantastic. Smashing those British troops back, but of course they're foot guards, so they're going to be very decent. But the musketeer, uh, the um, Russian troops are decent in melee as well. And as you can see, this chasseur has been an absolute beast for me. It has been taking out two generals by itself. So well done, chasseurs. That was excellent. And as you can see, I've got nothing against me on this side. So I do try and flank, but I didn't want to get in Carl's way either. And he just had everything sewn up over this side already. He basically just shredded everyone <laughs> in front of him. But yes, it was a fantastic kind of blitz battle. Really good fun. Really enjoyed it. Um, I love playing aggressively and fast. It is so much more fun than playing defensive. And if someone plays defensive against me or or Carl or whatever, we're going to play fast against them and try and win that way, of course. It's just so much more fun. But I do manage to get my chasseurs into the action here because they, they're pretty much untouched. I'm not going to lie. Look at all these units. Like I, I didn't really lose many troops. And now the 6-inch howitzer can get unlimbered, but it's not going to be able to fire at anything, <laughs> of course. And here come the chasseurs. He does manage to put them in square. But we do manage to get a charge off into this King's German Legion foot. Look at that. Absolutely fantastic. These two chasseurs retreat because of the square. But the musketeers are going to get into them and route them quite quickly. So these guys, like, because their general was gone, they started to crumble, really. Um, like, their morale-wise. Which was great for us. And as you can see, the chasseurs, their party trick, firing their rifles into these chasseur foot guards and taking them out. I don't know how, which general was that? So that was Carl's. Uh, I don't know how it died. Interesting. I can't see it on the map either. Must, I think it's got shot by our own cannons. But that is it, guys. So as you can see, Carl doing the predominant uh, amount of damage there. 1,900 kills. That is amazing by him. Really good. 1,378 for me. So pretty decent. But just didn't really get that many losses because I, I just didn't really face the enemy for a while. But Carl got up there and, and uh, already had shredded them by the time I got there. So that was excellent moves by him and of course decent amount of kills for both the enemies as well which was really good but a really good battle a blitz on Lodi a hill blitz on Lodi which is good fun let's have a look at some of the troops this chasseur that had 13 left at the end 175 kills absolutely amazing these chasseurs 164 as well which is very surprising I don't know which regiment that is and they only lost 26 so they did an amazing job Old Guard 118, that's kind of expected. Young Guard 105. But as you can see, I just really didn't lose that many troops. Uh, like some of these, like the Howitzer didn't even get any kills. And the uh, Six Pounder Horse Artillery got three. So it kind of was even a waste of money on this battle. But we weren't expecting it to go quite so quickly. But hopefully you enjoyed, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed this battle. Please do like, subscribe. All that good stuff, it really helps us out to try and grow the channel. Thank you very much for watching, guys. And I'll see you all again on the next video.